About a month and a half ago, Idaho's House of Representative, Representatives passed a joint memorial to seriously consider talking about creating Greater Idaho. Well, we wanted to find out what those in the middle of this border moving movement felt about it. So we made a trip to Harney County, where 63% of voters in November of 2021 agreed to talk about moving the border. One of the first counties to do so. They don't know how rural frontier almost we are out here. Harney County covers more than 10,220 square miles. I mean, we're the largest county in, in Oregon. We're bigger than some states. Big in proportion, just not in population. Only about 7,500 live here. My neighbors aren't close. Probably my favorite thing. Which is why, for many, Harney County is seen through the window of a car. It's just a passing through part of the state. But those few who call Harney County home also call it cow country. We have more cows than people. And most of those people, more than half, live in Harney County's only two cities, Burns and Hines, which is where we find Tony Foster. So why Harney County? Who moved to Hines in the early 1990s. It's been a great place to raise girls. We have two girls, three grandkids. Tony's been working with upholstery almost as long as she's lived here. If you would have caught me yesterday, you would have caught me finishing up the chair over there. She now runs a business, recovered from what used to be a 30-acre salvage yard. I think the deed says give or take an acre. <laughs> does it really? Yeah, it does. Because back in January of 2020, things changed. And there were some fires and salvage yards in and around the Portland area that got out of control. And after that, they just, the, the state, the power that be, it runs in Salem, decided that everybody should be treated exactly the same. So they took our $10,000 bond and raised it to a $100,000 bond. Which took the Fosters $250 a year insurance fee and increased it accordingly. So we shut our doors as far as salvage. But that led to other doors. Door panels for 52 Chevy Custom Deluxe four door. And Tony turned full time. We have customers from all over. To upholstery. We even have some from Idaho. From Idaho is how Tony would like to describe herself someday, to be part of this idea <sighs> of Greater Idaho. Basically, just got tired of Portland and Salem deciding that everybody needed to do the same thing. The way they do things is so much different than the eastern side of the state. What does this movement or this idea mean to you? Having a government that believes in the same things that we do. You're not taxed to death. We stay here. The Oregon government's just gonna keep adding on the taxes and we don't see any benefits from it. Why not just move to Idaho? Why? My place is paid for. We've been here for over 30 years. It's not cost effective to move. There's not a lot of people buying old salvage arts. In the middle of Oregon? In the middle of Oregon, in the middle of the high desert. It was the geography. Yeah, born and raised. And the people. Family is so important. That brought Micaiah Schrader back to Burns to open her hometown barbershop. Harney County just has something that pulls you back. <laughs> and she sees no problem with pushing away from the west side of Oregon. Why? Because Oregon is completely separated. I think this last election proved that. Three counties just dictated who the governor was gonna be. And if you look at it, it's all of the rest of Oregon is red. And we on this side are not well heard out here by the government there. Like they have no idea what life is out here. Micaiah and others like her point to the Beaver State's stance on guns and drugs. Recent laws limiting the number of rounds in a magazine and lifting the criminal aspect of having a small amount of drugs on hand have left those on this side of the state feeling a little lost. How am I supposed to teach my kids that they're not supposed to do drugs and, but that when they get older, there's no punishment for it. Okay, so what about completely legalized drugs like cannabis, which brings in tens of millions of dollars a year to this side of the state? We're doing better than some of the dispensaries in Portland because you know we only have one other shop here. Julie Batesel opened Tumbleweed Cannabis Company six years ago. And she says this time of the year, 
80% of her clients are local. We were surprised. Yeah, we thought it would be mostly the 20 somethings just wanting to get high. Now, of course, we have that, but the vast majority of our customers are people who have some kind of an ailment and they're looking for relief. Veterans with PTSD and they can't, or people who can't sleep, or the elderly people who want something because their knees ache, or, you know, someone who has cancer and needs RSO, which is Rick Simpson oil. So we're helping people with that. Julie says she's aware the majority of people in Harney County, including some of her clients, want to be part of Greater Idaho. But the, the problem for me is it will put us out of business and it will effectively kill the cannabis market for this area. That's because marijuana sales and production are illegal in the gem state. And if Greater Idaho's plan to include all of Southern Idaho goes forward. And that's where all of our outdoor flower is grown. Most of the state's cannabis crops, Julie says, would have to go indoors. Which indoor weed is fantastic, but it's expensive. And I think that it will fuel the black market because, you know, people are going to need their medicine. They're going to find a way to get it. So obviously you're not in favor of Greater Idaho. I am not. I'm not, but I understand the other side. I lived in Idaho most of my life, and so I understand where they're coming from, but I think maybe they haven't considered how many people this will affect negatively. Yes. Judy Irwin has. Born and raised here. She is another one who lived a long time in Oregon's biggest city, but recently bounced back to Burns. What do you think about this whole Greater Idaho thing? I don't like the idea. Um, first of all, I'm an Oregonian. I was born an Oregonian and I want to die that way. I don't think everybody's thought it through very well. Those things that would take some thought, what to do about taxes, the minimum wage, and government jobs. Outside of ag, the county's largest employer. So my mom works for the state. What happens to that job? She's been there almost 20 years. Oh no, she has been there 20 years. So what happens to that job? Judy says she already sees improvement coming from Salem. I think we are being heard now. We're starting to receive a lot more funding. And she believes moving the border is too big of a leap. And people have to realize we're not a big population area. And unfortunately, when people vote, it's the majority rules. And just because you're not part of the majority, you don't get to take your toys and go home. That sentiment is shared by those who see the greater Idaho movement as segregation. You know, we're going to separate the liberals from the, Demo you know, the, the conservatives. I think it would be better if we got to a place where we're just Americans again and we stop trying to segregate and become you against us or vice versa. But for those who see the benefit of becoming Idaho, also see a benefit for Idaho. I would say more freedom. You got land, you've got trees, more people that vote the way they do. I mean, this is a bunch of conservative people that want to stick to an old way of life. Why wouldn't Idaho want that? What if this doesn't happen? We'll keep fighting the good fight. It'll take a long time to shut us down. We've come a long ways. We're not ready to give up. And as we mentioned many times when we talked about this story, in order for greater Idaho to become a real thing, both state legislatures have to agree to it. And so far, neither has made significant moves to do so. It then has to get approval from the U.S. Congress. Idaho's joint memorial sits in the Senate State Affairs Committee this session, has been there since mid-February. Oregon's version has been stalled in their Senate Rules Committee since January.